Are you looking for step-by-step -step plans for a new dining room bench? Today on DIY Man, I'm going to show you how to build this little 44-inch bench. Check the description below for the material list and my recommended tools. First, let's cut a 2x4 up into two 17-inch pieces. We also need to cut two 2x8s to 44 inches. Next, let's cut two 2x2s that are 10 inches. We're also going to need one that's 40 inches. Next, let's take a couple 1x3s and cut two at 10 inches and two at 40 inches. I know you guys are enjoying my workbench here. Now that I got my shop built, that's one of my very next projects. All right, now that that's done, let's put two pocket holes on each side of these 1x3s. I'll go ahead and put a couple pocket holes here in the middle as well. We'll use those to attach the seat top here in just a little bit. After I had already assembled the bench, I realized that those smaller ones really could have used a pocket hole in the center too. Next, let's set up our table saw. Set the inside edge of your blade at seven inches. We're gonna rip off one side of each of those two by eights. All right, now I'll set the saw blade to where it's an inch and three quarters uh, to the center of the blade there. And I'm doing this to rip those 17 inch 2x4s directly in half. These are going to make up the four legs of our bench. Alrighty then, let's turn those two 2x8s into one solid 14 inch board using pocket screws and a little bit of wood glue. Now I will say that you don't need the pocket screws uh, if you had the time and patience to clamp these boards and let them dry overnight. Uh, but this just saves you a lot of uh, waiting. Alright, so on the back side of these legs, I'm going to mark three inches up from the bottom here. I'm also going to mark the center of these 10 inch 2x2s. Two I'm going to flip these front legs over again. We'll flip these other legs over back again. And then we'll mark three and three quarters inches up from the bottom. Three and three quarters inches up from the bottom. And then, once we do that, we'll set our pocket hole jig up here uh, to where it's about half inch to an inch uh, from the bottom there. And we're just gonna drill down about an inch down into this. And the center on those three and three quarter inch marks. That's not straight, well. Okay, and then on these ones, Put those right in the center of these two. Okay. 
let's start putting this thing together. We'll start by taking this 40 inch 1x3. We'll put a little bit of wood glue on it and then we'll attach it to the top of one of these chair legs here. It's difficult to tell in this video, but I'm actually attaching this to the longer edge of that chair leg. Please make sure those center pocket holes there are facing up. Now you might see that quarter inch piece of plywood laying underneath that 1x3 and that just offsets that 1x3 away from the edge about a quarter of an inch and the reason I'm doing that is one because it looks cool and two um, if you have really really long pocket screws it'll keep those from popping out the other side. Now I'll throw on these 10 inch 1x3s. These are also offset a quarter of an inch. Now the front and back of this bench are exactly the same in how they go together. Okay, let's combine these into one solid piece. So the top of the bench should overlap a half inch on all four sides. So I'm just making a mark around the board to make sure that it does. All right, now I'm gonna install my bench onto my bench top. I'm not gonna use wood glue yet. I'm only gonna install it using pocket screws for now. That's because I'm gonna split it back apart in order to paint it and stain it. It makes it way easier. What the heck? It's not right either. That's why the number one rule of woodworking is to measure twice and cut once. Make sure those two by twos are 10 inches and mark the center. I'll re-drill those holes since I'm a dingleberry. Now that we have the correct size two by twos, let's go ahead and attach those to that three inch mark there using my screw and dowel method. If you haven't seen my video on how to do this method, I'll put a link in the description for you. It's a super easy way to be able to use really long screws and be able to hide them. And it looks really cool when you're done. Oh yeah, by the way, make sure that hole on those 10 inch 2x2s is facing out. You'll see why in just a second. The last step here is we're going to use this 40 inch 2x2 and attach it directly between those 10 inch 2x2s. We'll use the screw and dowel method to attach this guy too. To cover up all our screw holes, we're just going to use a 3 8 inch dowel rod with a little bit of wood glue and trim it off using a jigsaw. I usually tap these flush with my hammer too. Let's pretty this up a little bit with a quarter inch roundover in the router. I usually fill in any blemishes or cracks or nail holes I might have before I sand it down and finish it. It kind of sounds like a little bee or a mosquito, maybe. Hey, before I show you guys my finished bench, I've got a question for you. Do you think a steel John boat will float? Well, me and my brother-in-law, we're wondering the same thing, so we're going to build one, and we're thinking about making a video. Let me know if you're interested in this video in the comments below, and we'll see if we can figure out the answer to that question. Here's our finished bench. It's ready to be abused by kids and adults alike. Anyone with basic woodworking skills and basic hand tools can build this bench. And you can too. If I can do it, you can do it. And another thing, if you enjoyed this build, be sure to check out this chair. My brother-in-law from Affordable Backyard Woodworking built these. And trust me, if he built it, 
anyone can build it. Check out the description for that link.